This episode is brought to you by CuriosityStream. Get access to our new streaming service, Nebula, when you sign up for CuriosityStream by using the link below. Looking back at our collective history, it's kind of a miracle that humankind has lasted this long. From plagues that wiped out half of all human life in Europe, to global wars that embroiled dozens of nations, to nuclear standoffs that could have blown up at the flip of a switch. As scary and massively destructive as the World Wars and the Black Plague were, there's nothing quite as terrifying as the threat of global nuclear war. In this episode, we're going to look at an often forgotten hero of the Cold War. A man who saved the world by doing nothing. Stanislav Petrov was a lieutenant colonel serving in the Soviet Union's air defense forces during the Cold War. He had a dull but incredibly important role. Petrov's job was to monitor the satellite system which kept watch for incoming American nuclear missiles. As you can imagine, a good day would be when you don't have to do anything. Of course, Petrov wasn't just trained for good days. One early morning, during his overnight shift on September 26, 1983, he was shaken to alertness by the computers at his station. The system had started blaring its warning siren, and the screen indicated that the United States had launched five nuclear intercontinental ballistic missiles. Petrov knew that he had only 20 minutes until the missiles would hit their targets, and that he had to act quickly. Protocol demanded that he pick up the phone and alert the top military commanders, but something didn't seem quite right. In 2013, Petrov recounted the moment to the BBC, saying, The siren howled, but I just sat there for a few seconds, staring at the big, backlit red screen with the word launch on it. If Petrov decided to alert the commanders and the launch order was given, the world would have devolved into all-out thermonuclear war. In 1983, the Soviet nuclear stockpile was somewhere around 35,000 warheads, and the US had about 23,000. The two countries would have been absolutely decimated, and their land irradiated for years. But if America had tens of thousands of warheads, Petrov thought, why did the computer system only show that they had launched five? Surely any preemptive strike would have to be so overwhelming that there would be no chance of retaliation if the Soviets weren't quick enough on the draw. Why risk allowing their sworn enemy to strike back? It wouldn't have been a huge surprise if the US did decide to nuke the Soviet Union. Earlier that month, the Soviets had shot down a Korean passenger plane that had strayed into Soviet airspace, killing all 269 passengers, including a US congressman. This event just added fuel to the already simmering fire of the Cold War, and tensions were running high. Despite all this, Petrov hesitated. He recounted later, There was no rule about how long we were allowed to think before we reported a strike. But we knew that every second of procrastination took away valuable time that the Soviet's military and political leadership needed to be informed without delay. All I had to do was reach for the phone, to raise the direct line to our top commanders. But I couldn't move. I felt like I was sitting on a hot frying pan. After spending precious minutes debating what to do, Petrov decided to disobey his sworn duty and did not sound the alarm. Instead, he began to investigate the computer system for glitches. The whole system was pretty new, and the lieutenant colonel still didn't trust it completely. 23 minutes later, he was proven right. Petrov knew that it would have only taken American missiles 20 minutes to reach their target. And since no alerts had been raised, it had to have been a false alarm. The computer system had made a mistake, and Petrov had trusted his gut and averted nuclear annihilation. For his service, he received an official reprimand for making mistakes in his logbook for the night of September 26, 1983. This is one of a handful of stories of humans making the right decision in the face of an unthinkable test. And despite Petrov's heroism and the fact that he saved millions of lives by his inaction, he's still fairly unknown. The much more publicized incident of Cold War nuclear close calls is of course the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962, which is perhaps the closest humankind ever came to destroying itself. During this tense 13-day period in October of 1962, the United States and the Soviet Union were engaged in a standoff around Cuba after the discovery of Soviet missile deployment on the island. After several nerve-wracking days of negotiations, President Kennedy and Nikita Khrushchev were finally able to come to an agreement. The public agreement was that the Soviet Union would remove its missiles from Cuba in exchange for a public declaration that the US would not invade Cuba again. More secretive agreements also included the dismantling of all US-built Jupiter MRBMs, which had been deployed in Turkey against the Soviet Union. Of course, the Cold War was rife with deception on both sides, and it wasn't long before the two nations began building up their arsenal again. And 21 years later, Stanislav Petrov had to save the world by choosing to do nothing. The Cold War is one of the most fascinating periods in history, and if you'd like to learn more about it, CuriosityStream has fantastic documentaries on the subject, including a great one called Cuba Nuclear Standoff that details the fear and tension of the Cuban Missile Crisis. If you watch my videos, you'll know that I'm a big fan of CuriosityStream. It's an online streaming service with thousands of nonfiction titles from some of the best filmmakers in the game. I've recently partnered with CuriosityStream to build my new car show, Grand Test Auto, that I host with Joseph from Real Life Lore. 
Grand Test Auto is available right now on Nebula, a streaming platform built by and for independent creators like CGP Grey, Polyphonic, Real Engineering, Wendover Productions, and of course, Second Thought and Real Life Lore, among others. Because we all appreciate how supportive our fans are, CuriosityStream is offering a free Nebula subscription with every purchase of a year-long CuriosityStream membership. With this bundle, you get the best of both worlds. CuriosityStream is home to high production value documentaries and non-fiction work, whereas Nebula is a place for educational YouTubers to try new things and experiment with different formats, things the YouTube algorithm would punish us for. CuriosityStream loves independent creators and wants to help us grow our platform. So they're offering Second Thought fans free access to Nebula when you sign up at curiositystream.com slash second thought. When you sign up for CuriosityStream, you get instant access to thousands of nonfiction titles like Cuba Nuclear Standoff. And you'll get to watch a whole bunch of new episodes from Grand Test Auto, as well as other great Nebula originals like Working Titles, a series dedicated to breaking down popular TV show intros, and the first episode of Real Engineering's new series on the logistics of World War II. By signing up for CuriosityStream, you'll be helping not just me, but the entire educational community, as we work together to build a place where we can create exciting new content that just wouldn't be possible on YouTube. Give it a try by signing up using the link below. I promise you'll love it.